training today. It's a bit of a mixed bag. Got some body weight stuff in there, push ups, pull ups, because they're always pretty fun. Um, outside of that, the main movement, I'm going to be doing a deadlifts. Just working on power production, really. Um, you know, do some box jumps in there as well. Outside of that, it's just mainly doing some light rep, hip rehab, um, making sure that you know it's not getting too much shit through it, really. Yeah, keep it keep it simple. Do I start off with the bit of cardio on your sessions? Depends whether I have time. Um, if I've got a pretty quiet day like today, I'll usually do a little bit just because there's never any downside to it really. Especially doing some interval training. It's never going to gas you out too much for weights. Um, but if I'm pressed for time, man, you know, I'll just kind of throw it in whenever. If I have to come out later on in the day, that's all chill with me, I can split it up. Get the pizza socks out of lunges to warm up with, isometric lunges to be precise, underrated exercise. You don't see it too often in the gym, so why do you do that? Um, and what's the benefit of that movement? It's essentially a way for me to kind of work on absorbing some force through my hips before I go and do something a little bit heavier. Because of the nature of, the, of what it is, I'm trying to hold something up. I can't use too much weight if I'm doing it for quite a long time. Um, it's also a very positional specific thing. So when I'm, you know, running, doing any sort of ballistic movement for any form of sport for me, which is volleyball. This position here is quite a sort of staple for when you go to do a run up for a jump or sprinting anywhere pretty much. Um, so it's just making sure that my technique um, through that position is you know, pretty sound. Otherwise, you know, if I don't practice enough, then it kind of falls to shit. Don't want that. Jumps. 
apply metrics, man. Like, it's all really about like max force production. If I do three heavy deadlifts and then I sit there and do like eight max effort box jumps, I'm just going to start slowing down after a while. And for your body to essentially adapt to high speed movements like plyometrics, you have to be moving quickly. You know, if I do a box jump, I'm like, it's just it's not gonna happen. So keep it short, keep it snappy. It's not really there for fatigue at all. It's mainly just there as an expression of moving quickly, maximal like speed. Um, and yeah, I just get too gassed if I do deadlifts and then superset it with box jumps and do like, Six, seven, eight reps. Oh, they're not things that have uh, any particular logic of putting together at all. Um, it's purely for the purpose of just efficiency and saving time. Um, I like to take the rest periods, especially for something like this. Um, because my bad hip takes a little bit of time to recover in between sets. Um, so if I do them separately and have to rest for the same amount of time after this every, every single set, I'll be spending like 25 minutes on drop lunges. It's more something I want to spend five minutes on. Um, yeah, as far as it goes, there's not really any particular overlap between what muscles I'm using at all. The general um, fatigue that you get induced from each one of these is pretty, pretty marginal. Like I can't say drop lunges are a particularly challenging movement. It's more just a technical thing, making sure that all the forces going up from my foot, knee, up to my hip. This is happening in the right, in the right way. And then pull-ups are just fun. essentially trying to hold something and slow it down. You know, gravity wants to pull it to the ground and trying to stop it. The exact same thing with this, but this is a little bit more intense because I'm already moving and then I have to stop it. So that almost just acts as like a, you know, a lower intensity warm up to this. Like full circle moment. Oh, 
Das ist jetzt wieder. Um, it's a lot of my education from university, um, self-teaching, um, courses I've done, learned from, has all been related to a lot of biomechanics. So I did physics at university before I did exercise science. So I've always had like a wee itch to scratch from that. Um, as far as it goes, strength and conditioning really is kind of the gold standard for you know, applying biomechanics into training. There's a lot of thought that has to go into what you're doing. Um, and I've also played sport in my life, so it kind of satisfies both ends from my nerdy side of physics and then my uh, gym bro side. Yeah, and as far as it goes, like, it's an awesome gym, the environment's great. A lot of wide open space, which I really like. Um, Everyone here is fantastic. Especially you, Connor. <laughs> I'm just coming into my second year of it now. I'm feeling pretty confident for it. Um, just excited to see what happens, really. Yeah. Do you think um, having a, an education in physics has really helped you and your clients? Yeah, it's massively underrated, man. Like, when I was at university, the one thing that they butcher the most in teaching is really the physics component of it. Like, training is literally just, you know, applying forces. You know, like, every time you pick up a dumbbell, you're exerting a force. Every time you pull on a machine, you're exerting a force. Um, so being able to kind of understand how everything ties together is really beneficial. Um, and it's, in my opinion, what kind of separates you know, people who kind of get stuck in older school ways of thinking about things with like the, you know, more fluid relationships between different exercises, um, different adaptations you're trying to elicit, um, and so on and so forth. Say, when I say I'm planned with my sessions, I mean I come in with a goal um, and a variety of exercises that I can choose to achieve that goal. Um, so for example, if I'm trying to work on, you know, absorbing force through my hip properly, um, drop lunges are a great way to do it, um, the yielding isometrics at the start are a great way to do it. Um, there's a ton of other ways I can do single leg RDLs, you know, you can do beast dance RDLs, kind of anything. Um, and depending on how, you know, stupid my schedule is for the week, because some weeks it's pretty sporadic, some weeks it's pretty quiet. Um, so depending on how often I'm able to get in and how tired I am, you know, just completely dictate what I do for that session. Yeah, usually five, six times a week. Um, but then I make sure, of course, I don't do a fairly large number of exercises. I kind of like to keep it pretty simple. Um, you know, achieve a goal and get out. Um, and that way it allows me to train more frequently. You know, when you work in multiple gyms, it's quite hard not to just train, train most days. Yeah.